Y'all hear us? Yeah, I got a thumbs up. Got one thumbs up. One thumbs up. How about Dennis's thumbs up? We have we have three three people logging in. Now we got three three logging in. So we can probably start. Bill Button is not here. So who should do the honors? Anybody got any announcements? We rescheduling Sony? Um Patrick, you have a Dance through all these cables. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we rescheduling Sony? Well, boys and girls, I don't know. Officially, he has accepted the November slot, but he accepted the March slot and the April slot. And the June slot. <laughs> <laughs> That's if we're getting here. Song is not a lot. Well, no. He, he he's a professional equipment guy for Sony, and he does shoot. But he's their one of their professional equipment guys, and so when the boss says you need to be somewhere, he has to go. Give him choice. So, um, what I'm thinking of doing for the November one is. Um, Bringing in Robert from Precision Camera, who's got a few tall tales to, you know, keep us happy. If he can make it that night, I have to, we have to check and see if if there's a basketball game at UT because he shoots those. So, um, but next week, next month, we have uh, another one of our own. It will be uh, what's his name? He ran away for Ireland. Uh, Oh, yeah, that guy. Pirate? Yeah, Captain Hook. Gary. Captain oh, no, yeah. Captain Hook. Gary will be Gary doing Hook. our presentation next month, and he is uh, going to be talking about um, absent stuff, basically, in post-processing. So just don't clean it up and get rid of the dust and, and bump up your um, contrast and your color, but to actually add things to it and, and manipulate your image. Uh, I'll do it. So, in the meantime, though, this evening we have our very own Stephen Burkish. Stephen has given this presentation at least one one other time. One yeah. other time. Oh, good. And he gave it in, in a big public forum with at least ten more people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, he was willing to fill in for us, and I appreciate that immensely because it made my job so much easier on Tuesday. So, without, oh, I don't like that term. So, here we go. Here Stephen, we go. All right. Taking off with aviation photography. Taking off with aviation photography. Um, I know at least one of you all sat through here, but I did change the title up to batch. <laughs> Instead of it just saying aviation photography. So I did, and I changed the first picture too. Uh, because you're getting kind of a different, a different uh, presentation. So, yeah, um, I did this two weekends ago down at Precision Camera for their expo. They asked me to come in and do a talk. I said, You want to talk birds? And you want to talk birds? So I decided to talk these types of birds instead of our feather friends. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm a big time aviation nut, and uh, we'll see why here in a few minutes. Some of you all may know, some of you may not know. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so I figured I'd come give you all a quick class on this, uh, on aviation photography, and uh, yeah, you all know me, Stephen Burkage, I'm the uh, treasurer, head cook, bottle washer. Um, here for the uh...
uh, all the way to Arizona. It's a nice three week trip. Um, and there's no bathrooms in there, if you want to know. There's a funnel with a tube that runs out the bottom. That's the bathroom. So anyway, uh, my main body of work, aviation. We all know astro photography. We all know that. Landscapes. Really been getting into landscapes and wildlife. Everybody knows me from bears, birds, and all that. All my social media stuff. If you want to reach out, you all know how to reach out to me. So anyway, um, yeah, I spent close to 20 years in the Army, Army Aviation. Uh, the going joke was how come I went in the Army Aviation instead of Air Force. The day I went to the recruiter, the Air Force was closed. They were off like they normally are. So the aviation guy pulled me and said, hey, uh, the Army recruiter pulled me and said, we have aviation too. I was like, cool. And it wasn't like the Air Force. I didn't get to stay in five-star hotels and stay on an air base. I was usually out in the middle of, middle of mud and heat here in Texas. Um, so, yeah. And if you do notice on the, the front end of that bird there, the camera goes there. So, yeah, this was an Intel, intelligence aircraft in the Army. Um, this is when I was in Germany. I was going through my um, top gun phase, about two feet taller than Tom Cruise in my flight suit, walking around in my aviator sunglasses and all that. Um, 35 years ago or more. I was there before the wall came down and left after the wall came down. So I got to see both. And what we did was basically we flew the border between East and West Germany. Um, there was another unit of ours that was in, down around Munich, um, Stuttgart actually, and they flew the border between um, Germany and Czechoslovakia, because at the time they were all Germany's. And yeah, if I go to my house, I got nice chunks of the Berlin Wall because I went there the weekend and started coming down. And, I had to grab me some pieces. And I, plus, I just got my driver's license right in here. So that was a pretty cool road trip. Plus, you could do, you know, 140, 150 miles an hour and not get a ticket. So that was always fun. But yeah. Without that, we'll go through what my gear is going to an air show, research from an air show. Show center at an air show, the importance, camera settings, some techniques, some post processing. And yeah. And if you got any questions, let me know. Anybody out there on the internet or whatever, um, just shout out the questions or put them in the chat and you'll get relayed to me if you got questions and stuff. Uh, when I did this precision, it was pretty good because it was more interactive. People ask questions. Uh, my gear, I've been a cannon shooter since 1978. Um, when my dad got me my first camera, he was a cannon shooter. So that's why I got into cannon. And he gave me a, he got me a camera. We were going on a sixth grade field trip to Washington, D.C. Got to see President Carter. Yeah, yeah I'm not old. <laughs> um, right now, I'm currently shooting an R5, which I upgraded about two months ago. I traded in my R6, went to the R5 two, three months ago. Um, I also got the R7 prop sensor, and there's a reason why I got that one. Um, for it being a crop sensor. My two main lenses that I use at an air show or for wildlife and everything are my two Sigmas. Um, I use the adapter because they're EF mount, Sigma has an amount of RF mount, and I did just see something on Canon rumors that they're possibly maybe in the next six to eight months from RF glass from Sigma, maybe, if Canon, 
lets their secret out. Um, so yeah, the, the main one I used was 15600, which you know, if you put it on the R7, that's like almost 900 millimeters. Um, R5, and then I went to that, went from the R6, which was 20 megapixels. And that was a good camera, don't get me wrong. It was great for astrophotography, and I use it a lot. A lot of the pictures that are in here now are from the R6, but I figured I can't take money to brave with me, so why not go up to the R5, 45 megapixels, but I'm not going to tap a little bit more on that. I even got, I do have an extender, a 1.4 extender for my Sigma, so if I wanted to slap that on the R5, I could do that as well. Um, I do have the Canon RF 24 to 105, F4L, um, the 1535 wide angle there, F28. I mainly use that for my astrophotography, but it comes in good when you're shooting static displays around an air show and stuff. That and the 24 to 105, you can just kind of walk around with that instead of lugging the 150 to 600 with me. Um, I haven't, I have the 85 millimeter F2 macro. I haven't played with that yet, but next time I go to one of the air shows, I might play with that, maybe get some macro shots, you know, the rivets, some of the old little birds and stuff. You know, that could be interesting there. And maybe I might pull it out this weekend and get my full shot. They'll probably all be dead after this weekend. Um, yeah, there you go. Used it since 78. Uh, R7 crop sensor. Uh, frame rates the R5 is 20, R7 is 30 frames per second, electronic shutter. Um, the autofocus. Is amazing. All the new cameras, Sony, Nikon, everybody has the new autofocus is just amazing how to just pick up and track a subject, which makes life a lot easier. Um, and really, with both also the in body stabilization and the lens, I I don't use tripod much anymore. Um, even at air shows, I've tried using them a couple of times. And when you go to an air show once with a tripod and a Wimberley head, and then you realize you missed the shot because the plane was behind you and you can't swing this way, whereas if you're just handheld, you can just wherever they are, up, down, this way, that way. And you get, I get excellent sharp shots just with being handheld. Plus most of the time if you're shooting jets you're at two to three thousand of a second. So you don't need a you don't need a tripod. Um, so let's see if this plays <coughs> oh. This part didn't have to push up the camera. You can get the audio. It's nothing like hearing a F22 frame by you. You got the vapor cones there. What I was doing there, I had a GoPro, and I had a little attachment on my hot shoe. So as I was shooting, I can actually do video too. So that's why um, that was pretty cool. I haven't done that much lately. Maybe maybe Houston. Um, there's a Houston air show coming up and today. Tickets went on sale, and at twelve oh one, I purchased my tickets. How, how many air shows in Texas uh, do we have? Is it pretty easy to find one? Oh yeah, there's there's got to be an easy seven to eight here in Texas. Um, the main one, uh, the big ones that I've gone to, Corpus Christi, Kingsville, um, Fort Worth, up at the um, Fort Worth um, Air, Airport there, Alliance or whatever. 
there. Uh, I think Bell Helicopter Plant is up there and all that. that. That's one. Last year, I think they only had one day. I don't know if they're doing it this year or not. Uh, Houston, down at Ellington Field, has sure, it for two um, I haven't seen one in Georgetown in a while. Burnett um, has the Blue Bonnet one. That's mainly a lot of old warbirds, which is pretty good, especially if you want to practice your panning and getting that prop motion. Um, San Antonio, yeah, just, you know, make sure you can get back to the car. And I'll, I'll tell a story about that later, but anyway. Uh, some terms to know, Air Show Center, I changed that, updated that. Um, panning, everybody knows what panning is. Um, photo pit. At an air show, um, that's usually show center pretty close, um, mainly just the photographers there. Um, and then Sunrise Photo Tour, which I have signed up again for at the Houston Air Show, which is pretty good because you get to go in early, get to park really close, and yeah, you don't have to deal with the crowds and everything coming in. Because you'll get in before everybody else is allowed to even get in there. So, and then you get to walk around a lot of the static planes and you don't have all these crowds and you can get photos of planes without all these people gathered around, which is pretty good. So, yeah. Most, most of the big ones, yes, they do. Yes, they do. Especially the ones like in Houston and Fort Worth. Um, most of the military base ones, not so much because they're usually just free to the public anyway. But these other ones, because they're a for profit, um, they'll have photo pits and they'll have various seating. You know, you can pay, you could, you could just pay the minimum of five or ten dollars to get in and you know, where where you get is where you get, or you can get reserved seating and stuff like that. Um, going to an air show, some things you do want to bring, like bring brim hat, just Texas. Most of the time it's going to be sunny. Uh, you don't want to get burnt. Uh, lots of sunscreen. With the sunscreen, just be careful because you'll be lathering up all day in sunscreen. Then you get it on your hands, just be careful around your camera equipment that you don't smear your lenses or your sanctuary and stuff like that. Um, I've done that a lot. Comfortable shoes, because most of the time you're going to just be standing the whole time, unless somebody behind you telling you to get down because they're not able to stand. And Water if you can, um, so you don't have to spend 10 bucks on a bottle of water, but um, yeah, bring that. And usually like where we go, like the photo pits, they have water for you, some breakfast, lunch. So what you're paying for is you still, you know, you got food and everything, you're not having to go out and spend 20 bucks for a hot dog and $10 for a bottle of water. Um, this is from the Bernie Air Show back in 2023. Simulated bombing run, A-10 Warthog. Um, I've got to see them from when I was in the military live fire up at Fort Hood. So that's pretty fun. We were doing an exercise with the A-10s and Apache. So that was pretty cool to see that. And Hellfire missiles and Uh, research, as you all know, anything you do photography wise, or most of the time, do a little research. You know, you're, you're wanting, to, you're going to want to know things like, okay, you're going to go to this air show. Where is the sun going to be? Are you going to be shooting? Because most air shows are going to start at noon. 
So the sun's going to be up high already, right? So are you going to be shooting into the sun? Are you going to be shooting? Is the sun going to be to your back? You know, those things. You go to like the Fort Worth Air Show, and the way the runway is situated, as the afternoon goes, you're shooting west and you're shooting into the sun. Houston, you're shooting, it's behind you, because you're shooting more to the east. Corpus Christi, Kingsville, you're shooting more to the east. So you want to check those out. I use photo pills. It's not just for astrophotography. You know where the sun's going to be. So, um, and researching helps you make the photo. Uh, Blue Angel. Number five, number five is always the solar for me. Um, when you're researching Blue Angels, Thunderbirds, kind of like with Jim, the Blue Angels seem to be more photographic than the Thunderbirds, white bird. You know, it's like shooting birds. You're trying to shoot a white bird in the sun with the blue angel, at least you got some contrast. You can be physically on location to use photo bills, and you do it from a remote location. No, you can do it from a remote location. The question is he, he was asking, um, do you have to be on location for photo bills? No. Now, if you wanted to do the AR portion of it, it helps to be on location. So then when you're doing that, you can see and plan. But I plan all my, whenever I'm doing astrophotography in Milky Way, I can go in there and plan, map, and it shows me a little thing where the Milky Way can be and all that. And then you could add in which way the sun is going to be and what angles and all that. So you don't have to be on location. Um, other things too, I mean, you can, you can go online um, and Google like Blue Angel Thunderbirds and you can kind of see what their routine is going to be. So when you get there, you're kind of prepared. Now, most of the time, things end up getting surprised anyway. So there's always one that sneaks behind you and when they do, sometimes change. And I guess the Blue Angels have two different shows depending on the day it is where it is in their rotation. So you can go on a Saturday, see one show, and go on a Sunday, see almost a totally different show. Now they're gonna all do the same kind of things, but the order in which they do them might be a little different. Mm -hmm. So you wanna kind of be prepared and you know you want to get that shot where they're crossing together or they're on, looking like they're on top of each other and stuff like that. Uh, weather. You know, research weather is going to be raining. It's going to be cloudy. Burn it air show was pretty, it was a great day and chilly. And all you've got were, yeah, you've got some cool shots of planes, but it was like you dropped a gray backdrop in front of you. And because it was just solid, solid gray. Uh, I kind of like partly cloudy. Not totally cloudy, you want to get some sun in there, but so you can get some of the blue sky, you know. Still, it's pretty cool with blue skies, but you got a lot of empty space. These clouds add a little, a little to it. That was taken San Antonio air show last year, and it was kind of partly to mostly cloudy. Um, the TV doesn't do it justice, but there is some detail on the And um, we actually had the sun kind of behind us breaking out. Hazy, like it's been the last couple of days. Corpus Air Show was hazy like that. And if the planes got it far out, it was like eating. There was no recovery. There was no post-processing. There was no replacing the scum. I even tried to do AI stuff and that didn't really help much either. Um, like I said, auto pills. Time the gates open. 
Um, can you bring a camera bag or not? I haven't had an issue with bringing a camera bag, but I have heard some people at some airspace when they were not allowed to bring a camera bag. Then you're stuck carrying everything in with you. And I'm going to say, if you can't bring a camera bag, it's going to mostly probably, probably going to be on a military base. They don't want you bringing the camera bag. But when I was, when we were at NAS Kingsville, they still let us, but they searched the bag and everything. Whatever the Navy's version of the MD would search the bag. And again, layout of the airfield, know where the show center, the center line is going to be. Because anytime they're doing anything, they're using a point, the center. And anytime they do anything, it's going to be right there. So if you're here, if you're on that side, or way down there, and you want that shot where they're crossing like that, you're never going to get it because they're only doing it right. And another good way to know where the show center is going to be is usually the Thunderbirds or the uh, um, Blue Angels. They have these little carts with all their communication equipment and everything. And they're usually right there in the center. And then I've seen some people, I might do it this time too, get you a little radio and listen to the traffic. Well, who's up, where they're doing, what they're doing, and all that. I've seen people do that. I haven't done it, but I don't even know what kind of radio I would need. But maybe Google. Google you can tell radio, me. Like you used to talk to me pilots who told me. Yeah. So uh, this shot here, F-35, 1, 2,000 per second, ISO 320, F-9. I'm usually at F-8, F-9. You know that saying, F-8 is great. Whatever, there's other sayings for that too. 600 millimeters, that was on my R6 before I got it, you know, R5. Is your camera set for single shot or do you set? I'm, I'm always, air shows, I'm on electronic shutter, max 20 frames per second or 30 frames per second. There's some downfalls to that, but um, when it comes to, I forget what they call it, but you can get some weird warping in an electronic shutter, especially if you're panning. So we got one from the Corpus Christi Air Show, and the boat looks like it's like like all elongated and everything. Okay. So I ended up pulling the boat out. So that helps me jam. Yeah. So basically, you hold the shutter button, shutter button down. For oh, the yeah. Button. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take it. Air show, I'll easily come back with three, four, five thousand photos. Like, just uh, glad I don't have to go to Pueblo uh, and go to the back of the rings. What is your time with that? Are you doing back part of focus? Um, you know, to be honest, since these new cameras, I mean, I was always going back button and focus, and I still have it set up for back button and focus, but because I've been trained that way for so long, but I've been really trying, I'm just using the shutter button a lot of the times now. Because the tracking, as soon as it, it picks up and tracks, I mean, I haven't had any of that lag in like DSLRs, where sometimes they say you get lag because it's focusing, then it's metering and you push it. But with all the computer processing in these cameras nowadays, uh, I haven't had any of those, those issues. Uh, show center photo pick. Like, if you weren't show center, you would not get a picture like that. And for any of you long time photo club people, know I've won one of our competitions like five years ago. Um, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't get that. Um, show center, everything happens, happens around there. Uh, this was Fort Worth Air Show 2008. Um, got some clouds in there, which are pretty cool. Um, well, one sixteen hundred. And if you look at all my photos in this, you'll see most of them I tried to get what my settings were in or at the time. Then 
another photo you wouldn't get if you weren't almost so centered. Um, a lot of these the blue angels and thunderbirds are masters of optical illusion. Because if you actually look, they're not on top of each other. They may look like they're on top of each other, but they're really, they're, there's separation between them. But when it comes to the center, that's where then everything looks like, oh, wow, we're right on top. They're, they're not. They got safety, they got guardrails in there. Do you shoot full manual? Um, almost. I am on manual. I'll get to that, but um, I'm one of those people, I work smarter, not harder. Um, I'll let the computer decide some things for me. Um, I'm not a purist per se. I mean, something like this, fast action, I don't want to be fumbling around trying to get the right settings. So I'll get certain settings right and then let the camera decide other things. So you set your camera on speed or aperture? All day. Manual. All day. It's on, it, it, but I wouldn't say it's all men, but it's on men. Especially the photos. So. Photo pits, what are pretty cool is you kind of get these, they usually have like a tiered thing. So even if you're up high here, you're still shooting over people. Whereas if you're just at a regular air show, you know, somewhere else, and if you're behind somebody, you're behind somebody. So you could knock them in the head with your lens or get some good shots in the back of their head. Um, so, um, a lot of times, too, you know, you get lunch, water. Even at the Houston one, if you did the, the sunrise tour, if I remember correctly, I think we had breakfast coffees, too. They had breakfast coffees. So, that was pretty good. And I know at the Houston one, even at the Fort Worth one, they have a camera store. Fortunately, Houston, it's not pushing the camera. It's not their Houston. I'm trying to get them uh, to do that. But they had whatever the Houston local camera store was. And they had somebody there and they had lenses you could try out and stuff like that too. So, which was pretty cool. But I, I am trying to get precision to do that. But they are looking into, they got a relationship with one of the hangers there where they had um, recently, Moose Peterson went down to do something with air aviation photography. And they're seeing if we can maybe set something up there at their hangar to do, to have like a workshop or something like that. Uh, sunrise photo tour. I mean, you can't um, you get access to the planes that you normally, most people don't normally get because we were able to just walk around. They, they had things we couldn't walk here, walk there. We couldn't get close to the Thunderbirds, but all these other birds and stuff, um, we were able to get close up to. And I just sat back there. There were maybe one or two people in there. And I may have forgotten to take one shadow out or two. But, uh, yeah, I just set up and I knew the sun was coming up and I wanted to get that starburst and playing like that. And, and if anybody knows, last November was playing, went down a couple of four words. So. Um, and then photo credit, Jim, this is what happens when you get there early or way too early. You have nobody there. We were in a rush and we got there and we, we got the best, best place in the house. Um, that was at Kingsville. Camera settings. So you were talking. I guess I'm in manual for jets. 
I'm usually at a shutter speed of around one two thousand and up. Aperture, I'm usually f8, f9 for my long lens there for maximum sharpness. ISO, this is where it goes on auto because I don't want to be fumbling around because when you're when the jet's flying by, it might be full sun, half sun, all clouds. And I don't want to sit there fumbling. I'm just trying to just track that plane and let it go and do its thing. So I'll let the camera, and the cameras, they're going to get you the lowest highest so anyway. So, and nowadays, What's full of power on your ISO 12,800? Denoise and Lightroom cleans it right up. And plus, the noise, you know, it's not like the old DSLRs nowadays. So, for propeller driven planes, and the go and joke that a precision exists, because you all know who Moose Peterson is, he usually does the aviation talk and precision. I am not Bruce Peterson. A little shorter and less wide. Um, but um, he loves the prop planes and he has all of these calculations depending on what kind of plane it is and the engine to know what the RPMs are on that plane and what shutter speed he needs to be at. I'm usually somewhere between 160th and 1200th of a second. I, I do have some shots where I've gone down to 130th of a second. But if you're panning, you know, those high frame rates out of 100 shots, hopefully you get one or two. You use the polarizer? No, because polarizers are great. Okay, you shoot in landscape or something. You get a jump, but if you're you're going here to there, I'm not going to be now. Yeah, I can get the EF adapter with a polarizer in it, and it's there. I don't have to go to the in front of my lens, but no, I've never used it. Um, and again, on the propeller aperture shutter shutter speed aperture. I mean, what I'm doing is. When it's 1 p.m. in the afternoon, there's no clouds, full sun in Texas, whatever whatever I got to do to get that shutter speed down. I could be at F.2, F.32, or whatever, just to get that shutter speed down. And ISO, I can only go as low as 50. So. Autofocus, I'm always on Canon. I don't know what Sony's icons are, but AI servo, continuous autofocus, uh, whole area, AF. I'm not picking a point, not like I'm trying to, you know, pick out a bird's eye or an bear's eye or something. But nowadays with eye detection, you don't even need to, be, it'll pick up the eye. And then I'll usually have it on. I find that subject tracking vehicle works great for the plane. For the whole area, as soon as it picks up on that plane, which is usually the only thing in the air, it's going to lock in and lock focus. Most of the time, we're so far out anyway, most of the time you're going to be at infinity. So, uh, electronic shutter, I'm usually on Canon's high speed continuous uh, electronic. Not first curtain and or whatever. The only thing is you got to be aware on you know some some cameras. Everybody's saying Canon. I know the R3 doesn't have this problem, but I'm not going to buy an R3. Rolling shutter, you kind of sometimes you can get banding and stuff like that. Or if you're panning, you get some thing weird stuff there. Uh, Panning, um, great for props. I mean, you look at the photo on the left, it looks like it might've been a toy that I hung up on a piece of string and took a picture of it on my table because the prop isn't moving. I thought, well, yeah, I got the plane sharp, but okay. 
but what's holding it up in the air? So as I progress and you get into, you know, shots like this, where you can see the prop, you got that nice prop blur. And the other thing that helps out too is that smoke that's coming out and you get in the movement of the smoke. So it actually looks like it's flying. I think that was uh, the Burnett Air Show this year. I just made the gray a little bluer in the sky. So, yeah, so you can see a whole difference. That one shot there, one twelve fiftieth of a second, and here, one one sixtieth of a second. And being it was so gray, I mean, ISO 100, F14, I mean, it was pretty easy. I could probably went a little bit slower with the shutter speed and got more prop blur. Uh, again, panning. You know, got the full. You could barely, you know, I don't know how it looks on this. You could see that there's a prop and you see some blur, but uh, that was one two hundredth of a second. ISO 400, but because the sun was out, I mean, I had to go all the way up to F22. But with the smoke and everything, you get that good motion. You know, the plane is flying. It isn't just static there in the sky. Any question? What about an ND filter? I guess, yeah. I mean, you could do that. I mean, You'd be screwing it on, screwing it off, screwing it on, screwing it off. You know. uh, would you be screwing on to put off all during the? Not during, but yeah, I guess you could use an MD filter. Uh, I've never done it, but I guess you could really get get your, I don't know, maybe a six stop just to knock it down some. Um, again, more panning. Um, that same plane there, you got the nice blur of the prop, so you know it's flying to help. That smoke coming out helps too. And that, uh, that was one, one 25th of a second, ISO 114. That was at the Houston Air Show last year or the year before. So. Works great for jets too. I mean, most of the time you're gonna have your shutter speeds up there, but as long as you get, you know, got a little ground in there, you can tell that, you know, it was taken off at 35. Um, you got some blur there and some blur in the front uh, cloud. Um, also, just don't shoot flying planes. You know, Steve. static is fine. Steve, Steve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that a no? I'm hopeful with the train now. From back here, I see is that a, a ball on the front of the jet? Because uh, I there's a no no yeah. there's a yeah. dark is it? there's a dark bubble around. Yeah, it's got It's just this reverse vignette. It's really strange. Yeah. It's just lighter on the edges. Yeah. Mm. Well, we had some, I mean, lighting come through the clouds and stuff too. Okay. So that might be. Because it looks very circular, like it's part of the lens. Yeah. Could be. Oh, yes. I replaced it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't replace the sky. <laughs> <now. laughs> you see where it's a blue sky and you want to clouds? Yeah, I probably put some clouds in. Uh, you know, go go for some of the candid shots um, here, Devil Dog. This is the Burning Air Show. Um, I, this plane is pretty cool, this one, because it's right out of Georgetown. And you can go, if you want to spend 400 bucks, you can go up and go fly in it if you want. We'll take you up. I'm trying, I'm working with this uh, one of the bird, uh, when I did my precision class on bird photography, one of the handlers, raptor handlers, her husband is actually the crew chief on that. I'm trying to work something there. Or maybe we could do 
some kind of vintage shoot or something, you know, get somebody to get model or somebody in some vintage clothing, clothing and stuff, and maybe do a shoot like that. Still working on that. You know, and then that's that same F35, you know. So I like her call sign, Beowulf. <laughs> Uh, expect the unexpected, my crappy shots from Corpus, but this is the F-16 Viper team, demo team, and in Corpus, and then all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed it was dropping flares in the water. I, I think they only do it on air shows that are over water, and there's nothing for them to land on, but that was pretty cool. Um, You never know what's going to happen. Always be prepared. That's why I'm always, okay, I'm in manual wood. I got an auto ISO because, again, I don't want to be fumbling. When something happens, it happens. And once it's done, it's done. They're not going to come, oh, do you want me to redo that for you? Do you want me to do that side by again? It'd be nice, but they're not going to do that. Um, hey, blue sky. No, I did not put the moon in. The moon was there, that was a dumb luck shot. Um, but that was at the Fort Worth Air Show five, six years ago. I almost threw that shot out too until I realized, oh wait, that's the moon in there. Um, again, you know, tell a story with your photos. That's what it's all about. Um, this was Corpus. I took out the boat that looked all warped and everything, but other than that, it was out over the water, which I thought was going to be a good thing. Different backdrop, different, but it was so hazy. It was even, I think, hazier than what it's been the last couple of days here. So as soon as those planes got out any distance, you just lost the plane. Even using the haze, you were not, you aren't getting anything back. Uh, but again, tell a story. Okay, somebody looks at this. Okay, we know it's the U.S. Navy because it says U.S. Navy. Okay, we got the water. We're on over open water, high speed. Got the vapor, vapor cone happening there. Uh, you got motion blur, and you got the acrobatic high speed pass. Other things, and this one, I'm still working on these because it's, when they do these heritage flights, it's like, okay, you got a jet and a prop, put my sheet in. So I'm like, better speed down, so I'm speed up, you know, but left, that was from Kingsville. Well, both were from Kingsville. The only difference is the one on the right, is the Navy F-35 made for carrier landings and stuff. The one on the left is the Air Force F-35. So only different, one, one of the few differences, the Navy, the landing gear is a lot beefier because it's always landing on that, those carriers. I haven't seen, I want to see someday, the F-35, uh, the vertical takeoff. Prop in with your photos. Now, again, you got some nice vapor there. This is the, I don't know which air show this was. Again, F-35. I kind of like the F-22 better. The only difference is the F-22 is $500 million and the F-35 is $50 million. But they both have almost the same identical G turbofan engines. The F-22 is 35,000 pounds of thrust to F-35 is 40,000. 
post-processing, Lightroom, which I seem to be using a lot more of, not 50 layers of landscape photos and <laughs> one photo in Photoshop. Photoshop, I got Topaz Photo AI. Um, for Denoise, I got On One. Um, also, depends on what I do. I'm actually finding because since I put this together, Lightroom's come out with their denoise, and that is seems to be a lot better than the Topaz and the On One. Um, I was watching a demonstration and somebody, now this was a portrait, but in Topaz and On One, you lost the detail in the clothing, whereas in Lightroom, you still have that detail. So I know you did. Well, I put a video on that showed where he was comparing the various denoisers and that guy's use using birds. His conclusion was that the uh, opaque light room would have burnt like a gallon. Yeah. Um, and then the other stuff. Yeah. Like so, pass, I'll use birds, animals, stuff like that. On one, by far, is better on astral photography. Why? Because it's got a lot of astral photography from. The gentleman that did a talk on astrophotography with our club about a year and a half ago. Um, and then I even got Boris Effects Optics, which is the only thing I use on it is I can enhance the afterburner with that. Or add an afterburner. Boris Effects Optics is actually really also nice if you like you need the smoke or uh, yeah the background and you need it. the smoke's always when it's outside it's never thick enough where you need it so you can kind of pump it up so you know, it I want to play with it and put lightning and stuff. You can do that too yeah, that's I haven't had time to do that but and it's pretty cool because you can put it in there but it's got little scrubby things so it's like it'll move the lightning all there you know it's not the same lightning bolt in there you can you can change it and stuff you know Stephen. the other thing about the jump pads is i've noticed that they're updating it a lot of times more than once a week i mean it's doing all this machine learning there's millions and millions of photos of the process yeah so it's only going to get better the same thing with that beta in photoshop yeah it's opposite uh, yeah, I, 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 I got, got it on the disc. Yeah, I got it on the disc. Yeah. Yeah, it was a one time thing that I got. Um, but yeah, no, you, you can add interesting lighting effects into. I've seen people use it for, you know, you want to add like window blind, like light coming through a window blind or whatever. It's, it's pretty cool. There. You got any questions out there in internet land? No, no questions, but the chat is over. Is everybody asleep out there? Uh, no, they're waving. Okay. Yeah, wave. Yeah, <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting to the end here, so y'all better have some questions. If not, um, well, question. yeah, have, oh, go. Uh, no, my question. Is there a market for aviation photography? Is the there a market? Yeah, there is a market. Um, uh, stock footage? If sometimes stock footage, um, as my going joke was, I'm not Bruce Peterson, but he liked to shoot air to air. Mm -hmm. um, you know, getting a shot of a plane and shooting it air to air is a lot better than from the ground, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, there, you know, that, um, and then too, I mean, a lot of these people, especially the private plane owners, you know, you get to know them, you get a nice shot of airplane, you know, they're going to want it. So, um, have fun with your post processing. Um, you know, the two on the left, 
It looks like they were right overhead. They were actually flying in front. Just turn it. I mean, you know. And if you actually look at the A10, it's like it's firing. Um, the one on the right there, yeah, I enhanced the afterburner a little bit, but uh, just playing around with doors and things on there. Um, but. And yeah, and then this plane here, I like it. This, there, there's another one out there, but it's all aluminum. It's not painted green. So it's very shiny, but this one kind of looks more like how they were painted when they flew over Germany and, you know, prior to us storming the beaches at Normandy. Steven. Yeah. This is Dennis. Yeah. Uh, I had a background in air intel also, but I was an imagery interpreter and looked at the stuff that they shot post and pre. I'm wondering if you're, uh, if the Army's version of air intel also included a bunch of grading of missions. Yes. Our planes, we had cameras. Uh, we actually had a flasher pod that we were banned from using after somebody shot one off at night and caused a major pileup on the Autobahn as it blinded <laughs> a bunch of people. Um, but yeah, no, we, we, we had photo and actually our birds too had this big pod that was off the side of it, um, side looking airborne radar. And what right. it did as they flew, it was able to look out the side a couple of hundred kilometers out. And what we were always doing was keeping tabs on what the Russians and East Germans were doing on the other side of the border. Whenever they were having, um, whenever they did, you know, like we would do our exercises, they were probably doing the same thing with us. Anytime they had exercises, I mean, we were flying mostly you know, 24 hours a day. It was kind of like what, kind of like what's going on in China right now with us exactly. in China. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. But it was a whole different ball game when I got to Germany because I first was stationed at Fort Hood, nothing going on there. Got to Germany and it was like, Oh, oh, by the way, you don't got weekends. You're working every day. So, um, and then the wall came down and nobody knew what we were supposed to do. Any other questions? Just... Go. Go, Dennis. Because he got a uh, the, questions. Any any other questions, comments? Everybody's very happy. Okay, two thumbs up. Two oh. thumbs up. Very very well. Come yeah. on, any more questions? Man. What kind of questions do you ask? <laughs> hey, um, morning question. What kind of question would you ask? I don't know. Good question. Like anything, you just, I mean, the more you go, the more you learn. You're always, if you're not learning, you're dying. So to speak, always learn, um, follow, follow people. Like I said, who's Peterson? I joke, but if you look at his aviation photography, it's, it's, I don't think anybody comes close to his uh, photography on um, aviation photography. Um, his wildlife stuff's really good too, 
but he really likes the aviation stuff now. And actually, I think his son was part of the filming team. I forgot what was some movie here um, recently. He was part of um, some of the first African American Navy pilots. Moose Peterson's son was part of it, and some of the planes flying. Shooting air to air, this footage was used in that. So. It was a pretty good movie. So when you go out to these shoots and shoot thousands of footprints, how long does it take you to capture that? Afterwards? Go through that afterwards? I don't know. Um, a long time. I'm still going through <laughs> stuff. It's like you start, and it's like, oh, no, that one looks good. I might be able to. And then when I'm bored and I have nothing to edit and I'm just sitting there, I don't know. Why do I got, I got 500 shots of the same F-16. It's like, to pick one or two of the better ones and get rid of all the rest. It does take a long time. Some people sit there and people sit there. I, I have a day job, so I don't sit there all the time and go through them. Now I'll go through and Try and pull them and find the good shots and edit them, but I'm I'm still constantly. I mean, I'm going through stuff I took in like Alaska in 2011. I'm like, I still got all these bare backsides. It's like, what was I thinking? You know, <laughs> like delete, delete, delete. So, and what kind of storage should you use? I right now I just have a my book duo. With two eight terabyte drives, I'm um, at about five or four and a half terabytes with everything. I keep deleting stuff. I'm eventually going to go to a Synology, but I'm still trying to look that out. Um, You're still doing yeah, uh, back online. Yeah, I mean online. I use back It's like seventy bucks a year, unlimited. Now going to a Synology, you're supposed to get a different one, but Somebody, I had to ask my techies here to decipher what that one guy was telling me to do. Keep something plugged in, like a local drive, have that continue to back up the back blaze, and then have your Synology back then. So well, I'm living proof, but I got 11 terabytes up. Stop me. Mm -hmm. Except for 70 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, and then um, usually when I'm editing, I got a new computer about a year ago. I got two terabyte SSD. Usually I'll, any new shoot, I'll bring on locally to go through. And then probably after about a month or two, if I don't touch it, I just move it over to my external drive and do that. But my library catalogs out of the mess. I need the keyword more. Pick a strategy and stick to it. Not some files are like this with the date, some files are not, some this. Sometimes I rename them. It's like the end of the camera comment. No, I know you can. Um, I know Canon's. I've heard people do that where you can do like a, a voice memo. And then when you, so when you download, if there's something that you wanted to remember, it's kind of embedded in the photo and then you can hear the audio file. Or, oh, okay. I should do that with birds. Yeah, that's the round footed booby. Okay. You know, but uh, you, yeah, you can do that. I usually end up like at an air show. It's like, okay, what was that plane? And then I'll go back to their website and, okay, all right, yeah, that's the plane. And uh, yeah. let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. Um, a couple of announcements just to remind you that the deadline for the photography, the floral theme, is this coming Tuesday at 11 59. 
So if you have some pictures of flowers, let's get them in. And if you are thinking about a, a walk out, there's a photo walk on uh, this, this is, uh, not this Sunday, the 25th, uh, June 25th at the University of Texas campus, meet at the Littlefield Fountain at 7 p.m., I believe it is, uh, Gary Cook has set this up so that you can walk around the campus, get some of the architectural pictures. Uh, University of Texas is a great place to, to see things and uh, might be not many students, but it, well, they're coming back to campus, so there may be some students. Summer session. Hmm? There'll be a summer session. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, any other announcements? Let's see. Whoa, Here's there's your picture. <laughs> oh, well, uh, there's a new member to join, Dwight Brown. He's not here or online, but uh, if you have a friend who's interested in photography, invite them to come as a guest. We certainly welcome that. And if they're interested, they, they would like to join. The website has all the information on how to join. On the table there is a, a print of a historic barbecue business. And uh, I took it out of the frame so I could use it for another photo that I'm gonna put up at the, at the uh, coffee shop. Which is another announcement, I guess. This Friday, tomorrow, there will be the hanging at four o'clock. Uh, oh, the the right. 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 They will uh, let us hang and the pictures will be up for a month. And so if you've got an image there, then you need to, to bring it to the to the store downtown Google. I think that it's a 12, 12 images, they're really nice images. They were chosen through the popular choice voting. And uh, so yeah, that's it. Then we're about to the meeting the third meeting. Uh, you want to say again, what was the, is it? We have, a, we have a, this month has a, a third Thursday. Oh, the yes. 29th. I don't think there's been any discussion about this. You're talking about the social social meeting on the fifth? Yeah. Or? Well, I guess the question is, how we want I would say, no. But um, I'd rather save it for, for the critique. Which, by the way, it's it's July. Uh, what's the ju uh, July? It's not the fourth, I hope. So, six. 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 Fourth is Tuesday, so yeah. Okay, yeah. so our cheat day on the sixth of July. Yes. That would be the floral. I'm sorry, sir. He did ask you if we're doing a pop up June 29th. I don't have any information. Uh, the leadership uh, with Bill Button. And we haven't discussed that at all. And yeah. it might be, we'll just have to get the word out. Okay. How many How many of you in this, you're the loyal members. How many of you would like to come on that 29th and have the uh, chips? Yes, please. Is it, that, that's some interest. All right. Maybe we can think of something that's social. <laughs> we could do a stand around and talk. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a shoot. We could do a, yeah. well, a happy hour. Some a happy hour. Yeah. Ooh, okay, oh, the leadership will have to get the word out to you for whether we have a. Yeah. 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 Why not? Uh, and then uh, oh, I'll tell you, I, I got some stories about that now. <laughs> that's where all the that's that's where all the restaurant people go after they get off work to go to the bar. Let's go to the bar. Even though they have the largest bar. Okay. I don't know. Uh, so uh, the next critique is on uh, July 6th. Yeah. So that will be Thursday. Who's the speaker then on the... on the on the 20th? That's going to be Gary. 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 Oh, okay. Gary. Yeah. So he will do that's that's what our agenda is so far. Process. Yeah, post processing, yeah. you know, play with your image besides just bumping up the conference mm -hmm. or whatever you do. So, um, blank sheet, tell AI, fill it with flowers. There you go. You never know. Uh, so, I guess if 
If anybody's got any else, anything else, a comment, question, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, otherwise, we're done, ladies and gentlemen. Help us.